again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrett. And we're glad that you're tuning in. Absolutely. Um, so the kids go back to school. How I the know. heck did that happen? I know. I, 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 I can't even. Well, and I was kind of, I was in the store the other day. Um, I don't remember what I was doing. And somebody goes, oh, getting ready for, oh, you know. Back to school. Back, well, no, getting ready for winter. And I thought. It's August, sweetie. It's just still, and I re, I'm one of those people. I'm sorry, just because the kids are going back to school and just because the pools are closed does not mean summer's are over. Are the pools closed? Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah, I was the, gonna go. I this didn't year. go either. <laughs> um, the pool, I know Rayco did. I don't know if they all close at the same time, but Rayco closed on August 18th. I'm assuming because the kids that lifeguard go oh, back to go college. Back to, okay. So that's unfortunate that yeah. we can't find a better um, because that week. The next week would have been nice. And and I presume um, the water, having been a pool owner, the water gets cold real quick because at night, if like these right. last few nights. Oh, it's the, been balmy and lovely. I love it. I will tell you, though, I had to learn when I moved here that to really embrace the fall because yes. it's the best it's the time of the time. year. I love and sweatshirt short weather. Yeah, yes. And also once we get our hoodies back, yep. we ladies get pockets yeah <laughs> so i'm always super excited yeah. about that but you know that whole idea of winter is coming i mean for some of us i'm from africa so winter in it new hampshire is, is long and yes. bleak and hard for yes. me so i used to dread it starting it in gotta, august right. and now i'm like but wait a second it it's actually awesome right. until i mean no well, that's what i said i thought about the temperatures and i'm like okay this lower 70s maybe 80 on some days 40 and 50 at night i'm like Let's see, it's still August. We have all of September, so that's right. at least five weeks. And October and I'm like, is nice. And October can go either way. There's been Halloweens, I know, where I've been sitting out on my step with candy with, with shorts and a t-shirt yep. on. So we've got six to eight weeks of really warm, really right. nice. Nice I mean, weather. And then, and then you just have fall, real fall. Yeah. I mean, November is usually pretty crappy because it's, it, 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 it's when the yeah, time it, changes well, and, and it's gray and it and all the and everything it's kind of like right. April, it, yeah. you know. It's kind of that easing into the. So next it is season. what it is, and I, I finally are having the governor over to my home this evening, which Woo, is kind of like exciting. a little stressful for me. So I actually <laughs> weed whacked the first time this year, though. I'm like, why don't we do this all the time? Because we just don't get around to it. We've right. got to get better, better at. Um, yeah, I did, I did all my deadheading yeah. yesterday. I'm, I hope the plants yeah, come back. I'm still out. planting I plants. No I keep telling I'm myself saying. not to buy more plants, and then I go someplace, and I'm like, oh, except for these two rose bushes, you know. Well, actually, we want to see if we can hit some sales. And there is. Some There's some good in. stuff, you know, in Clarence. I even at Walmart and Hooks it. They had some, um, I took pictures, because I'm like, oh, maybe I'll come back and get two of those. You know? mm. After the governor comes to my okay. house, because I, I can't take on any more projects. Are you excited projects. and ready? I am. Um, I'll be yeah. there tonight. Yeah, there'll be a lot of people, apparently. It's a meet and greet, It's a meet and greet. We want to make sure that, you know, people in Manchester are familiar with Victoria Sullivan and um, in my ward Ray Hebert's running for alderman and the governor agreed to come and talk to people and it's it's just going to be fun and we're going to have lemonade and cookies and it'll be great. Nice. Um, so speaking of Governor Sununu, I was reading in the paper this morning, um, there's a, the headline is state business tax estimates slump could be fodder for budget fight. So I was like, well, I've got to read about that. So the thing with the budget at the state house is everything's based on projections. There's, you know, it's not like we're taking, well, what money do we have in the bank and how are we going to spend it? We're saying, what money do you think we're going to bring in and how are we going to spend it? Some of us would like to spend less. I think Governor Sununu in a lot of cases would spend less or spend differently. Um, so a lot of the state revenues come from business taxes, which are pretty onerous, 7.7% um, tax on business profits. So God forbid you make profit. And then the 0.6% tax just on businesses in general because you're a business. Um, so they're estimating that there could be $91 million less than the budget writers had forecast. Well, which budget writers? You had the Democrat budget writers that, you know, wanted to spend a ton of money, that wanted to impose a, a state income tax. And, you know, then you had Sununu's budget, was had different spending in it. Um, but it did make me think about the fact that this is a good example of why when, whether it's at the city level or the state level or, God forbid, the federal level, you know, like we have a state rainy day fund. And it's for exactly what it sounds like. It's for that really unusual circumstance. You know, when we had the floods a decade or two ago, whoever knew we'd have two floods, you know? <laughs> um, and the same at the city, you know, you put, you're supposed to put money into contingency and the contingency 
part of the budget isn't supposed to be specifically for things that you know you can't get through in the budget regularly. Right. So at the state, because that should be an actual should, budget right. item. If, if you it's need something to give, you're going to spend routinely. Right. If you know that you're going to use the contingency money to hire more police officers, that money should just be in the police budget yep. so that it's transparent and upfront. So at the state level, um, we have a rainy day fund. But if you raid the rainy day fund and spend it, now, if it was on the flood and we needed to spend money because we had to do repairs, that's what the rainy day fund's for. But if you take the rainy day fund... Or if you take revenue spikes where that aren't necessarily going to always be there, and you implement spending that not only gets spent this year, but is going to get spent next year and the year after, where in God's name do they think those one-time monies are going to come from next year? Well, I mean, I think it's a it's a bargaining chip, and it's it's in my opinion, it's it's not a very good way to to set up your budget but it's a tactic yep. in order to try and claim that money yep. so you create an emergency by saying we need this money now yep. and then you put it in and you need it every year now suddenly you've made something that wasn't a budget right. item it's an actual right. budget item so it's a little bit of well, shenanigans and, and, and emergency you know like but everyday expenses everyday cost of doing business for whatever we can argue about whether we should do this that or the other thing i mean it's like putting your heating bill and pretending like you don't have a heating bill every or month like of taking, the winter and if then you're dumb <laughs> enough to pay into your income taxes so that you get a tax return because you shouldn't do that you should just make sure you they don't take it every week but you know that would be like saying okay we're gonna take the tax return that we're getting in march and we're gonna pay we have all sorts of money to pay our heating bill, so that means in April we can run the heating bill up. Well, <laughs> you're not getting a tax return again. Right. You know, you can't just take money that isn't continual and create expenses that are continual. And we see and that so all the at, time. At this stage, though, they they are speculating. At the end of the month, we should know more yep. about what those numbers are. So I wonder if this isn't a bit of a negotiation tactic yep. from both sides to say, hey, we need to come to the table. We need to figure out this budget. And in order to do so, everyone's sort of, you know, staking their claim and staking their positions. Um, you know, the business taxes have dropped a little bit, you know, the, the Democrats tried to sort of frame it as yeah. business tax cuts for out of state they, corporate yeah. interests. And First of all, it's 95% local businesses. Right. That's so right. that's your friends, your neighbors, the places you shop from. Those are the people, you know, that are getting taxed. And then those business taxes that were introduced over the past two years were literally 0.25% right. drops. Right. It's not like we're saying we went from 10% to 5%. So, ooh, it's like we went from 8% to 7.75%. No. And it is it, it is uh, disingenuous to for the Democrats to say they're not raising taxes by rolling back the tax cuts. That's exactly what a tax. And actually, it, if you do go read their original budget, it did increase taxes it, by twelve percent right. across the board. But I mean, even board, even so. just saying you're going to just roll back right. this year's reduction in the tax rate. Well, of course, that's a tax increase. That's how this works. Well, also because businesses, you know, I think people lose sight of the fact that any regulation or any, you know, sort of thing where they go off to the state house and they write words on paper and then, you know, has a cost to a business, right? So if you're trying to stick to the rules, the more rules right. there are, the harder it is for you to run your business. So for people who ha actually have to budget and who actually yeah. have to live within their means, unlike don't you have know, a secret our federal stash, government, right? for example example and sometimes the new hampshire government although you know we fixed that a little bit over the last decade um you know they have to actually go and figure out okay this is how much taxes yep. i'm going to pay so they've budgeted for those yep. numbers and then you can't and so if they factored in that 0.25 percent percentage drop in right. their taxes maybe that went to, to raises for their employees right. or extra you know, health insurance benefits or who knows what right improvements on equipment and so, you know, and, and they so were, it, it uh, can harm the people who are providing the jobs in this state. For and they, people. they, um, at one point, and I don't, I mean, it doesn't matter, the budget was vetoed, so we're, everything's fair Up game right now. <laughs> but um, they were wanted to make the rollback retroactive to the first of the year. And right. I thought, so not only are you raising taxes, 
You'd like to go backwards and raise taxes not six, seven, eight, nine months ago. Right. That's crazy. And that would actually force those businesses to write more checks. Right. So now you've already spent money. Money. You've earned that right because and, and and then someone's like, no, no, but you gotta give me the money you spent. So so it's just a terrible way to to run I mean it I, I wish people would think more about, you know, why why we allow government to break all these rules and do these things in a way that anyone who believes in how you run your own household right. would be like, that's a really bad, bad way to, to, to run your thing. But somehow when we scale it up and, and when we, we take say it it's a government, bit. we're like, oh, none of the rules apply. No economic rules. Right. Oh, we'll just spend. Oh, so what if we don't have the money? I'm sure it'll come from somewhere. Right. And it's like, yeah, who it, runs it, things like right. that? That's a well, terrible way I, to I've been having things. a conversation um, <laughs> I've had quite a few conversations recently with Ray Hebert, who's running for Alderman in Ward 10. Um, and he used to be um, the chairman, he was the highway commissioner, which I wasn't aware of, so in Manchester. And um, we were talking about, you know, I get frustrated because some days I, you know, not some days, most of the time, I wonder if there's an actual plan. Like, you know, we talk about master plans and all these different things, which I don't even know if Manchester looks at theirs or if we just spend money to make one and then put it away for another <laughs> 10 years or whatever. But I, I you sometimes have to wonder, like, so what is the plan? Like, when people complain about sidewalks, is there a plan? Is there a, a roadmap that we're going to use to rectify the problem? And he did say that when he was highway commissioner, they went after a federal grant, because that's what happens to hire some firm who came through and looked at every street and every sidewalk in Manchester and they categorized them in neat, you know, in priority and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, that's great. And Ray said, yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're, they didn't do anything with it after. Right. Well, and I'm like, but what? that would make way too much sense if you know that these are the priorities and you commit to fixing a percentage every year. I mean, I understand you can't just go through and fix every sidewalk in the city. It costs money. But there's some places in Ward 10 that I don't think have ever been fixed. And do we have a better plan, you know? And and I would love to see maybe a, a, a move towards digitizing a lot of those things, so right? That, so that, you know, if you do have staff turnover or you have different people who come in, let's not lose sort of the collective knowledge right. base that is built. Because I think there's a lot of times where we look at something like a mayor race, yeah. right? So, you know, Joyce Craig is getting blamed currently for all the woes, right? Right. But the woes were there under Ted Gatsis, too, if right. we look at something like the opioid crisis, right? right? So it's it's sort of like there there are these terms, there's mm. this time span where things happen. Yep. And so if we actually collected that information and we made it searchable and we put it online, then people like us and other people who are passionate, uh, who want to make things better, you could go and you could leverage the good ideas, yep. right? So we don't have to actually reinvent the wheel right. every time. Right. And and we probably paid for that, you know, or yeah, we certainly did, right? Sure we did. And 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 just side note, when something's a federal grant, you know, I, I know on a state level people love to go, it's free money. It's not, it's just money it's out not. of a different if pocket. If you pay federal income tax, that's, that's still your right. money. Right. So don't forget that, you know. Right. I um yeah, you know, in the what's the plan type thing, I mean it does. It does seem to apply. Like right now, you're right. I think. Th I think whoever's mayor, or whoever's governor, you know, whoever's at the top, everybody blames for everything, and and some things aren't. I mean, look, I, at, look at Trump with immigration. Right. I mean, Obama was actually also Worse. deporting right. and a right. lot of people, right? So it really that. just depends on, you know, who's who's focusing the lens. And so, you know, one of my core goals is just to make people stop yep. and think and to not get so caught up in this left, right, blue, red, Republican, Democrat paradigm, but just to be like, hey, we're people. Can we solve these problems? Yeah, yeah. and, and it... That goes down to a lot of things, you know, in local elections. I I do think, um, I think it's important for people to pay attention to who's running in, for various offices. Um, you know, there's school board elections, which I well, I think it was John DePietro who wrote a great article about, like, why it's so important for you to pay he's attention. A, he's a really good candidate. Yep. I've been reading his he, stuff. Well, he knows I'm his impressed. stuff. He knows yeah. his numbers, and he's got ideas, and he knows that some of them... Won't, aren't popular, but 
like how how long are we going to wait before we do something about the fact that our we have too many high schools? Somebody's got to. Someone is going to have to pull that bandaid. Yeah, you, know, you just got to. You it's... have to deal with some of these things, and don't keep repeating the things that we know don't work. Find other <laughs> things. <laughs> That's the worst part about government, right? Is this concept of we're just well, going to kick how the can do down the road, and then these things just tend to snowball, snowball, snowball till we get into a situation where we're like how many years i mean i've lived i've lived in manchester for like 30 years and i've been hearing about yarger decker for two decades and it, we still have Yarger Decker. And nobody really <laughs> understands it. All I know is that when they I tell I can't it, even spell it. I can't, right. I'm like, is there an R? Is it Jägermeister? Yarger Decker? I don't really know. Um, so there's just pay attention. Do some research. Um, I know some candidates, you know, I know Victoria's trying to get out and um, meet people in the homes. You know, like, she's coming to my house, but that's there's all sorts of people coming to my house, apparently. Um, but, like... In different neighborhoods, because that's it's so much better when you can talk to somebody one on one versus just seeing their video, right? Because videos. I think I missed. I mean, I mean, possibly they didn't even do them for the they charter didn't, commission. They, no, but they, well, because there's no. I don't. There's no real position. Well, and the that, elections right? not until November. Okay, I just wasn't sure because no, I, I definitely I like missed totally it, and I was out of town. Then I remember. Like, oh no! I remembered. Oh yeah, because I'm not running for office, so of course I missed it. <laughs> I didn't have to do one, but. Um, I did, when I saw that a couple people had done them, I was like, why aren't these other people? And then I realized, oh, it's just the people who have primaries. Oh, I see. So okay, once they get past the primary, I, I would imagine they'll have, um, everybody. Right. And, and, you know, and my field is obviously quite big. I think yeah. there are like 36 people running for There's nine slots. Crazy. I mean, that'll be interesting to see. I think yep. for me, just as well, a... It, the whole, that whole school committee, charter, commission thing, thing is going to be interesting to watch um i mean i really hope that out. you know I, I mean please if you're watching this vote for me vote for Carla. but um i really hope actually we can get a group of people together who have an appetite for right. for reform right. i mean look here's the bottom line we can't keep doing the same things yep. they're not working yep. so you know it could it could actually be kind of cool it could well that's the same with most committees it's great to get involved like i sat on a efficiencies when ted gasses first got elected and ted and i weren't the best buds back then um but he asked me to serve on a commission or a committee for um Oh, consolidations and something else. Fascinating work. <laughs> well, it, but it was very, it, it was interesting because we had different departments come to us and say, you know, like we could do this right. or maybe we could do this or what about, and, and like recycling was on there right. and how do you get more people to recycle and instead of uh, fining them for not recycling, can you incentivize Reward them? And yeah. you know, the trash pickup, which is now, hello, if you live in Manchester, you need to get a trash bin. You have until the end of August, they're half price and they'll deliver them to your house. Oh, actually, yeah, I go need online, to get that. Write that down. We we bought one maybe two weeks yep. before. Uh, we they bought did we bought it, one more for each of our houses yeah. just because they're they're like thirty seven dollars for really the giant cheap one currently, and so they'll deliver if it. you order before the end of the month, and you can order online, which is nice. Um. So, anyways, speaking of elections, speak, I, not that this sh surprised me. I just thought it was a little interesting. So there was an article um, that bubbled up into my feed from the Concord Monitor, and I always go, well, this could go either way because it's Concord Monitor. Um, but it was about um, new residency laws complicate college get-out-the-vote efforts and how um, Next Gen, which was the organization, um, I can never remember the gentleman who funds it, but I think he's running for president. Isn't it Tom um, Sisson or... I don't, I don't know. know. One, Tom Stein. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, Somebody, I, they fund Next Gen, which, right. you know, if you're inside politics, you know that. But if you're outside politics, you just think it's this happy, lucky group of people who just want to see people vote. Um, well, what they did last time is they were going literally, They this is not allowed, but they were on campuses knocking on doors. Door, They're not allowed to doors, do that. Yeah. And perhaps knocking only on the doors of the ones that they knew were Democrats, just I knew college students who thought that was happening. But anyways, they're right in, jumped right in, uh, Keene State College, you know, cal kids are just going back to college, and like on day one, they're there trying to get kids to register to vote, and I'm, which I think is like, it's kind of like stalkerish. And the article was talking about uh, this gentleman, Brian Rogers, who's a former student at Keene State College, and he decided he would rather influence the officials making decisions on his life as a student rather than his life at home. And the fact that it says at home. Right. You are 
saying, I don't live, live here, here, but I want to influence the things here. Because that would mean voting for city councilors and state representatives who could directly affect his tuition. Oh, well, isn't that handy? So he's a volunteer for Next Gen now, and he's on the Kent State <laughs> College campus um, trying to get uh, kids to sign up to vote. And now there's a new wrinkle because since the courts have uh, upheld HB 1264, which said if you register to vote in New Hampshire, you then have to register your car and get a driver's license. Well, you have to establish have, residency. And the way and you, you establish residency is you, like everyone else, have to follow the rules. Right. So if I have to pay the poll tax yep. of registering my car yep. in order to vote, then you know what? Sorry, so Sammy. Yes. So do you. <laughs> and what ha I was kind of glad to read um, that one, it's causing next gen a little bit of grief because they have to explain how the ref they can't just they're they misleading. can't just say we we it's can okay sign you, you can up. vote here it's they now have to explain though if you vote you're gonna have to register your car and so on but may um, i also recommend that everyone who goes to Keene state should vote for nobody for mayor yeah, that's in funny. Keene. <laughs> uh, we'll come back to that in a second so it was refreshing even in the concord monitor there was more than one student who was quoted as saying but why can't i why don't i just i'll just vote at home i'll just get an absentee ballot okay. Which it's nice to know that maybe that maybe we've brought enough attention to it in New Hampshire that kids are going home and their parents are probably like, yeah, you, you know, you live in Connecticut, right? <laughs> you don't live in New Hampshire. You really shouldn't be voting there. So and and you know, and we've said it before on this show, but the way I look at this is two things: if you're paying out of state tuition, then you don't. That's kind of a red flag that you know your home is somewhere else and you're from out of state. Therefore, you are not a resident of here. And if you are going to vote for policies that negatively impact the taxpayers yes. of the area you live in, when you yourself are not paying those taxes, that is wrong. Right. So go and vote where your mm. home is. Right. By your own words. It's 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 funny. It'll be interesting to see, um, especially since there's a Democratic presidential primary. It'll be interesting to compare that to, say, um, the first year that Obama was in, like, to see what the numbers that turn out for the presidential primary are before before we have to see what the right. numbers in next year's um, what, what, state. What's your sort of feel? Well, I, I, I mean, feel will like there because be less? it's such a big field that it's probably going to be a pretty high It will be, but right? it'll be interesting to see if the numbers in Hanover oh, and see. Plymouth and, and Durham and, and, and whatnot... Yeah. If the if the voter turnout is lower uh, than it had right. been, I mean, it's yeah. hard to tell because you can't compare it. They're never true comparisons. Well, and the thing to remember there also is we we hear this boogeyman about oh these kids are being disenfranchised. That's not true, right? Mm -hmm. You still can vote. You just have to yeah. vote where, you where your residency <laughs> is. So oh, you know, right. it's it's don't fall for all the, the well, you know, and, and and unfortunately, a lot of younger people, and this is I was the same way. I mean, we're all we all were young ones. They tend to believe, and if it's on your college campus and that's all you're hearing, you tend to get caught up in the emotional. Well, rather I, than the, the thinking it through and saying, well, that doesn't make any sense. But, but also the thing is, like, I come from a lefty background. Yeah. You know, like, I grew up in South Africa under apartheid. You know, everyone was, you know, we were trying to work to change those things. The ANC, the African National Congress, which was Nelson Mandela's party, was actually a communist party, right? In retrospect, I can look back it's, at that stuff. So socialism sounds good. Of like if does. you're a compassionate, empathetic human being, which I hope most of us are, it's like, yes, I want to help people. Right. But then if you look at the you understand how once do you I do learn this? how economics works, you have to be like, oh, wait a second. Like if something is free, it's not who who's paying for it? Like nothing in life is free, no. right? So so once that penny dropped for me, I was like, oh, now I gotta reevaluate <laughs> everything I believe in the world because it literally doesn't add up. Which is sort of what brought me to the path where I'm like, there are good ideas on both sides, yeah. but the way I think the best way to do it is bottom up and to encourage business owners, people who are gonna give you jobs yep. don't give people handouts give people opportunity yep. that's way too easy carla i know way too logical <laughs> if only if only um so this weekend's labor day weekend 
Is it? I, I, thought it was, I thought it was two weekends away. And then I'm right? like, oh, look, I have Monday off. Um, <laughs> I would have oh, well, driven into work and been like, where the heck is everyone? I'm glad you mentioned that because so, I would have. Long weekend. Um, take advantage of the great weather. Get out. Enjoy the outdoors in Manchester. Um, still have farmer's markets on Thursday, 3 to 6.30 at um, the plaza right there in front of the Doubletree, the center of New Hampshire, if you don't been here for a while um this thursday night they're showing jaws the movie oh, in veterans park so <laughs> do, do, that's do, fun do. and it's getting darker <laughs> earlier which is probably why they don't start the movies until late because it needs to be dark right. otherwise you really can't see um next weekend not labor day weekend but next weekend i believe is glendy Oh, right. Um, so for those of you who can mm. eat carbs, <laughs> go to the ball. Oh, and those, those donut <laughs> ball things. I don't even know what they're called. They're just delicious. Um, so that's coming up. And then, you know, the fall stuff. We don't really have old home days or any of those type things, but um, there's things to do in the surrounding communities. You can go out and, you know, pick pumpkins and and, and I know this is not stuff. New Hampshire specific, but I did read that there is a Downton Abbey fashion exhibit in Boston. Really? And I thought, How oh, fun. that could be kind of fun, fun to go check out. Um, too bad we don't have a train. I'm only kidding. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we should have a train. It should just be paid, paid. for privately. That's right. That's and right. if you can't make money with your choo-choo, that means you should not make taxpayers subsidize your wants and needs. That's right. Um, anything else? Got any last minute comments? Nope. <laughs> this was easy. Um, we'll be back next week, I think. I, I'll have to check with the producers. If not, you'll just watch this again. Um, <laughs> but enjoy the weather. Get out there. Do some outdoor stuff. Clean up your front yard. Make your neighbors happy. Bye. Peace out.